Hi, everybody. I'm Beth Bowles from Mount San Jacinto College, here to show you how to apply to MSJC. Our online application is just that, online, and it's free. And as soon as you apply, you are our student. You get an ID number sent to your email. I'll show you what to do to prepare for this, and I'll also show you your next steps and how to get help from our college, even virtually from our website. We have a, a daily live Zoom chat, so if you need help or reminders on what to do next, we're there to help you all summer long. So let's dive in. I don't want to waste any time or yours, and I will share my screen and show you the college website. We're Mount San Jacinto College or msjc.edu. Now, to apply to our college, you simply click on this red button at the top that says Enroll Now. That is your friend. I love this link because if you scroll down to what you are, you could be an incoming transfer student or a high school student seeking approval for concurrent or dual enrollment or a first time student. Even if you did classes while you were in high school and you're uh, now graduating, you're a first time college student. Either way, you click on these links and they tell you what to do next and in what order. They are in this order for a reason, guys, but I'll go through these as, with you as well. It goes pretty fast. Our online application is really more like a survey than anything else. So what I also love about these links is that when you expand the drop down, it tells you how to do the things that we're asking you to, to, to proceed with. Now, step number one is awesome. Um, it's a career exploration quiz. It's optional though, but it's kind of fun to do. After homework tonight, you can explore careers and learn a little bit about what you think you want to major in. After we apply today, I'll show you all your next steps. There's the student support hub where there's the live chat for help with anything to do with MSJC, especially how to do all these other steps. There's a person there waiting to help you all summer long. Uh, beyond that, I can connect you with student services, how to get involved with clubs, and beyond. So I'll go over the website a little more with you beyond actually applying to the college. So I'm going to actually log into an online application so that you know you have a really nice visual of what to do next. Uh, there's also step three, which is your FAFSA link, your link to money for college. So even our dreamers are applying to college, getting an ID number, and then getting money for college as well. So this is optional, but everybody does their FAFSA. That's step three. After we apply, you will activate your accounts, and it tells you here how to do that. Use these uh, red plus signs to expand the drop down. It tells you how to activate your student email. That's really important as well. And then how to log in finally and do an online orientation, which tells you more about college terms and how to be a college student. And then how to make an appointment with a counselor. Counselors will meet with you for your personalized educational plan. So that's after you apply and can activate your accounts. They will send you a link, a virtual link, so that you can meet online. How convenient is that? So you'll need to do step three, though, and four before you make that appointment with a counselor. And then you finally check for your registration appointment at your student email. See, that's important to activate your student email, where you'll check for your registration date. I will tell you when to do all these things in today's session as well. And then finally, you'll register for classes uh, and um, after on the or after the date that you are given. OK, that's the earliest time you can register for classes and then register for classes. And again, I love these drop downs because when you expand them, it gives you a link to a video that shows you how to do that and how to navigate our self planning portal and finally register for classes. Then know that you get a free bus pass. OK, well, the bus pass is six dollars better than the, the yearly pass and you can ride the bus for free and we help get you to our campuses or anywhere that the RTA bus goes to. Uh, after we apply. Let me take you back to our homepage and show you your area for you as a college student. Our schedule is always posted in the middle of the homepage. We're showing off spring 2022 now, but you guys are going to apply right now for spring, summer, and fall of 2022. So seniors, I'm talking to you right now. I uh, think in terms of applying right now, those applications are open but you will register yourself in classes over summertime, maybe even before you graduate high school, but most of us graduate May or June. So enjoy your summer, enjoy your senior year. Graduation is it's a fun time, but don't forget to check for your registration appointment to register for your MSJC classes in your student email after you've 
done those steps right in about late June or July. I don't want you to miss early registration. And I may say this a few times, it, it's early. You, you can show up in August and we'll probably get you a class, but it's a little tougher. You don't have the variety of choices. So before things get too busy and filled up, register for classes early. And then by then you've looked at our schedule of classes and met with a counselor. By the way, seniors, you can meet with a counselor by appointment from our student support hub before you even leave high school. But your first step is to apply and I'll walk you through that process now. So I just wanted to show you this is where you register for classes and log in and activate your student email. This is where you finally log in to email. Canvas is your shelf for online classes. But let me show you one more thing at the college homepage. When you scroll down, there's lots of great links for news and things like that. But also we're unique. Remember, we have four campuses. We're all the same college. And when you click on these links, you are given a option to click on a really fun video for about a three minute virtual tour. So there's the virtual tour of the Menifee campus and campus map. So when you get your classes, you know where to go, okay, and, and when to show up. We have four uh, options for four campuses. So you can mix and match, take classes at any of our four campuses or, you know, at one or the other in any semester or um, take online classes too. You can mix and match and, and do an online class in that same semester. We also have a tour coming soon for San Jacinto, but certainly there's a campus map when you click on that link, but also visit our newest site in Temecula. We've had two campuses in Temecula for years, but we're now at a gorgeous site right by the Temecula Mall. So take these virtual tours when you have a chance. And remember, these are links. If you have questions, this is my contact. My, me or my students will call you or contact you in the email. Or again, one more time, I wanna show you the Student Support Hub because this is where you can connect with a live person anytime. Uh, they're easier to get a hold of than I am, frankly, but go ahead and click on these links if you have any questions or scroll down to specific departments. Uh, this goes to your next steps. For instance, you're going to do your FAFSA, but you'll need to follow up with financial aid. We do post it at your self-planning portal, but you can follow up with financial aid here and ask the question, what is the status of my FAFSA? So the Student Support Hub is a wealth of information. It's designed to be a hub of all of our departments, including if you have any technical issues. And then finally, I wanna show you that we have emergency funding uh, while supplies last sort of, um, and here's uh, what the eligibility is all about. Typically, you just need to be a student enrolled or registered in classes and you can uh, apply for emergency funding, right? So in addition to your FAFSA, this is even separate from your FAFSA and it does not take away from your FAFSA or chip away at that funding as well. And then of course there's little uh, newsy news things across the top. So start using the website and get in, in uh, familiar with it. Um, maybe we'll continue to waive parking when you finally come to MSJC next fall, but typically you need to, you know, make sure that you've got all those ducks in a row so that you can start your semester smoothly. We also have a famous uh, welcome week uh, activities every semester. So we're on campus at information booths when we get back in person, which we, we we're starting now. So look for that in the fall as well and get connected. Let's apply to the college. You click on the big red button. Remember, enroll now. Click on first time student. Step two is the online application. So you'll start your application here. And this drop down keeps coming down, sorry. Just keep, uh, there's some, some things here that you can read, but you click on this apply now button, it's red button. Now, some of you may have created an account already. If that's the case, you just sign in on the, on the, red, on the blue sign in button with the username and password that, you're, that you created. But for those of you that haven't, you need to create the account. So it's uh, the blue button that says create an account. What you need to have for this online application, guys, is your social security number, a personal email address, and knowledge of your grades in math and English, and your overall high school GPA, if you're a recent high school graduate. So um, this is not for admission, by the way. It's like a fresh start at MSJC, but they're asking you for this so that they can continue that conversation with a counselor uh, for your placement in math and English for your academics, right? If you even need math and English for your degree. So you'll simply click on begin creating my account. You will complete this, these uh, dialogue boxes, you know, they need to know who you are. And even if you don't have a middle name, you'll just check the box that you don't have a middle name. And then you'll put your date of birth there and continue. So I've already created an account. There's three pages of creating an account. 
So just continue. This next page will be your address and your security questions. But that's what it looks like to create the account. Also, I want you to know that those that don't have a social security number can still apply to the college. So you just bubble in that you don't have a social security number. So once you've created the account, you can finally sign in. By the way, this application is in Spanish if you're more comfortable um, doing this in Spanish. I'm going to return to the sign in and I've already created an account. So I have a username and password. Now remember, this is just for the online application, which is from a state website. You can also get to this online application from SJC through your CCGI account. High schools sometimes use uh, CCGI. You'll just search for MSJC and apply that way. And you'll know you're at our website because you see our logo at the top of the online application. I'll show you as soon as I log in. So this is me, it's a test account. So I use kind of a slightly different name, but you will see this, start a new application. If you started an application and you want to save it and log off and come back to it, you gotta go do homework or do a meeting or school or go to dinner, you can. And this is what's happened here for me. I can resume it or, um, and finish up. It will save it for you, but I wanna go ahead and delete these, sorry, just so that you get a better visual. And what you will see is a blue button that says start a new application. So you'll click on that. And this is what it looks like to apply to MSJC. You have tabs on the left-hand side that these yellow circles will turn to a green check mark. That means that you're done with that section. And all these sections sometimes only have, some of these tabs only have two or three questions. So it looks daunting, it's a lot, but it goes really fast. And you'll see what I mean when I say it looks more like a survey than anything else. Pay attention to these. They want you to tell them which semester you're applying for. Remember I said our spring, fall, and our summer rather, spring, summer, and fall 2022 application is open. So look for the dates carefully. Fall is over, summer's coming. And anyone interested in our first year experience program should definitely apply for summer. That's seniors, okay? Uh, if you know you're not gonna take a summer class, just apply for fall. And then any student that's looking to do concurrent or dual enrollment should probably complete the spring 2022 application. So uh, let's pretend we want to go for fall. Um, when you are asked later, those that selected spring and you're still in high school, you'll have to say that you're in college and high school at the same time. So let's go ahead and go as if we're graduating and it will ask you based on these dates. Our fall semester starts August 15th, 2022. Now, they'd like you to select your goal. Most students obtain an associate's degree for transfer, but you can also do some job training classes as well. So think long term, even if that's your goal is to get just a certificate for now to get job training, go ahead and put that you're going to transfer because someday you might want to transfer to university and then things match up, but do not select undecided. They do give you that option. The reason you don't want to select undecided is you will be denied or delay your financial aid. Okay, and I don't want anyone's financial aid to be delayed. Here's the other thing they ask you is your major. You might not know right out of high school what you wanna major in, and that's fine. You don't have to select a major, it's not that crucial, but for just for purposes of getting through this application, select something. Again, they give you that undecided goal, but look, it tells you you're not eligible for financial aid if you go undecided. So please, unless you know you're never gonna do the FAFSA, don't select undecided. It will delay or deny that. So what I suggest students do if they don't know what they wanna major in, just select anything or get as close as you can to whatever you think you wanna major in. If you're going to go for veterinary science, we don't have that here, but you're a biology major, right? So just select biology. Uh, but you can also select, uh, I like to just select liberal arts. So it's alphabetical, there it is, and just select that. For now, you can change it with a counselor later. So just for purposes of today's getting through this application, select something. So I, I continued at the bottom of every page, there's a continue button. It will time out. So if you're gonna be on that page a long time, you have to go look something up, then make sure you save the page. So when I push continue, it shows me all the things I set up when I created the account. If I look to see and I miss something, um, I can go back and edit it, but I like the way it looks. I put my work address here because as I say, this is a test account. I can go back and add my social before I submit this. But once you submit it, if you forget your social security number and you submit this application for security purposes, you cannot go back and add it 
MSJC can. So you'll meet with them with MSJC's enrollment and you'll have to show your ID card if we're on a Zoom meeting or come in person and prove you know who you are. It's all for security reasons, but so make sure you do this right the first time, put your social. Now, if they, they wanna know, is your mailing address the same as your permanent address up here? Mine is, so I'm gonna check the box. Boom, I don't have to type anymore, I love that. Push continue and you go to the next page. And look, we've already done two tabs. We're on education now. So we want to know what's your enrollment status as of August 14th. It says here from the drop down, push what applies to you. You are a first time college student after leaving high school. Students that are not seniors and doing this for dual or concurrent enrollment, you're gonna get an option here that says you're enrolling in college and high school at the same time, okay? So um, you'll have to select that. But for, for you seniors that are graduating, put first time college student, even if you took classes while you were in high school. Again, you've received, they're gonna ask you as of this date, August 14th, 2022, that's fall, right? A year from now, well, yeah, about a year from now, that you've received a high school diploma from a US school. Then they wanna know, when did you graduate? Most of us graduate in May or June. Hey, this date, if you don't know your grad date, it doesn't have to be accurate, it doesn't have to be exact. So make up a date, but the year has to be accurate. So certainly you're gonna say class of 2022, right? But if you know your grad date, this is where you put it and make sure it's 2022. Unless you are a ninth and 10th and 11th grader doing this for concurrent enrollment, of course you have to answer accurately. Everything sort of has to match up. Did you receive a diploma? Well, seniors, by that date, yes, you will have re received your diploma. So think in terms of answering these questions as if you've, grown a, you've graduated. You attended a high school for three or more years in California. Most of us have, but again, you guys answer accordingly. Then it will ask you what your last school that you attended. I attended high school and it was in California. So select California. It defaults to US of A, so you don't have to add the country. It's already there, guys. And what I love about this is when they ask you for the name of your high school, as you start typing it, it will autofill Paris High School in Paris, or maybe it's Murrieta Valley High School or Temecula Valley High School. So go ahead and type in your school and leave it at that. If it isn't there, it does allow you to change it and add it yourself. Now, remember I said they're gonna ask you for your grades. Most of us have access to our grades, so get all that stuff before you get online or save the page and go look it up on another tab. You can go into your Aries account and they just want a general idea of what your GPA is. If you don't know it, don't sweat it, but for certainly give yourself a passing grade, okay? But we are trying to place you in math and English classes accurately. We don't want you to take a class that's too hard or too easy at MSJC and save you a semester. So get as close as you can to what you were in your last math class or seniors if you're in a math class now and then what grade that you got, okay? So again, mine's a sample account, but that's all it is. It's that easy to select your GPA and grades in math and English. I'm gonna push continue and go to the next tab, which is citizenship. They wanna know, are you a US citizen? So I am, most of us are, and I'll put US citizen. But look, if you're not, you're a permanent resident or something else, you can select that, but just be prepared to type in all your stuff, okay? Your, you know, your numbers. So go get your cards. But US citizen, you're good to go for the next question. They'd like to know, are you or your parents, are you a dependent of anyone in the military? Most of, a lot of us, well, some of us have, parents that are active duty or you are active duty, maybe you went into the military after high school and you come back and take classes with us, you can do that. Uh, but you want to say that my parent or guardian was in the active military, but look, again, they're gonna ask you for your state of residence and things like that. So you're gonna have to have that stuff ready as well. But none apply to me as what most of us, or some of us, you know, for me as well, uh, none apply to me and you can continue. So they wanna know, now look at the dates, as of August 14th, 2022, are, are, do you know, is anyone in your family or are you a dependent of the military? Okay, so I'm gonna continue. Uh, it's asking for residency issues now. Look, we're halfway through the application. This is how fast it goes. Are you, since August 14th, 2020, you wanna answer accordingly, lived in California since that date continuously? For me, it's yes, okay? 
you're going to have to prove residency if you choose any of these things that state you as or claim you as an out of state student. And then you're paying absorbent tuition costs. So most of us have not engaged in any of these activities. So you just wouldn't, um, you know, check these boxes. Have you paid taxes outside of California, registered to vote outside California, declared residency to go to college outside of California, or filed for a lawsuit or divorce outside California? I've done none of those things, so I'm not going to click any boxes. They'd like to know if you were part or ever have been part of the foster court ordered foster youth program. If you bubble in yes, then they want to know when did you exit? There's a great pathway for foster youth at MSJC. So you would just bubble in whatever uh, applied to you, please, if you're foster youth. But if you're not, you'd bubble no, and then those questions go away. Push continue, and we're heading out to the end of the application. Your next uh, section are your needs and interests. Then we're going to ask be asked about demographic information and um, ethnicity and then some supplemental questions. And again, this is really all a survey. Some of them are optional, but do bubble in as many as you can and that you feel comfortable answering. Are you comfortable reading and writing English? I am, so I push yes. Would you like information about financial aid? Sure. If I bubble in yes, they're just gonna send you a friendly email. They'd like to know if you're receiving food stamps, welfare, or any kind of social security income. Some of us are, and if that's the case, push yes, I'm pushing no, because I don't get any of those things. And then here's where you athletes can connect with the coach. Are you interested in competing on any of our athletic teams, football, basketball, baseball, softball for women, volleyball, golf, tennis? Uh, if you are, bubble that answer and you will get a friendly email from the coach, okay? Uh, but if you're not, you just are kind of interested in some um, intramural club sports, that's fine, but you don't want to compete. Or maybe, no, I'm not really interested in participating in sports, but I you know, probably will take a PE class if I need it for my degree, okay? And beyond PE, I mean, we have great dance classes, yoga, all kinds of neat athletics. And then here's other programs and services. Do you know we have free tutoring in every subject? Well, go ahead and check the box and we'll send you a friendly email. If you're a student with disabilities, you wanna make sure that we know about that and you'll get an email telling you how to connect with our counseling department or DSPS or health services. All these you can check off as many as you'd like. It is optional though. You don't have to check any of them if you don't want to. Just know that you'll get a friendly email for every box that you check. So success, it saved my options that I selected and I continued to the next demographic information page. They'd like to know, and again, you state whatever you're comfortable selecting are, you know, what your gender is, and you can also decline to state, okay? So select whatever you are comfortable stating. So I'm scrolling down, I'm comfortable stating these answers. They'd like to know too, your parents' level of education. Just pick a parent for guardian, parent or guardian one. I happen to know my mom got a bachelor's degree. My dad got a master's of fine arts from UCLA way back in the day. So that's what I selected. Are you Hispanic or Latino? For me, it's no. But look, if you select yes, you know, you can get pretty detailed on what your background is. So if you know it, that's fine. If not, then you select whatever you're comfortable stating. I, uh, if you're Asian, you can select from any of these Asian countries, et cetera. I am just selecting white and I'm just gonna select British Isles because I happen to know I am very British. So I'm gonna continue. You can select whatever you're comfortable stating. And look, guys, we're almost done. Here's some statistical information. Um, again, your mother's highest level of education. I already said that. I don't know why they ask you another time, but they do, do create a lot of great programs based on some of your answers, the state does. And that's why they're asking some of these things. Now, when they ask you how many people are in your household, go ahead and count yourself, okay? Uh, even grandmas, aunts and uncles, cousins that live with you, okay? Go ahead and select how many are under the same roof as you. And then what's your family household income? You can, you don't have to answer this one, okay? You can, it'll let you continue without it. But if you'd like to guess or that's fine. But otherwise you don't have to, you can leave it at select. And then they're asking finally, do you need assistance in learning how to read and write or pronounce words in English? I would say no for me, but you select whatever you're comfortable stating.
Now, when I push continue, we're at the end, you guys, you can review your application because if you see something you need to change, you can change it now. But once you submit it, we have to change it for you. So I like what I've put there. Uh, I consent, you push three consent buttons. I consent and then boom, boom. I'm not gonna do it again, because this is my test account, but check all three buttons or it's gonna bounce back at you and then submit the application. Once you submit the application, you get a good job, Jerry or Robert or Cynthia, whatever your name is up at the top, which is kind of fun. It would, if I submitted this, it would say, good job, Betty. Okay, so that's the online application. Let me tell you your next steps. Once you apply to the college, you are gonna get an ID number from MSJC for, with, sent to your student email, okay? I'm gonna sign out of this and show you what to do next. You will get a confirmation number. I would save it, you know, nobody, I don't know anyone that's done, needed anything to do with that, I, that confirmation number. But the important email that you're looking for is the one that says um, activation code. It'll certainly say there's gonna be some emails from you about those uh, departments that you checked off and welcome to MSJC, thank you for applying. But the one you're really looking for is an activation code. The activation code th that you get, you'll need to copy and paste that into the link from within the email that they give you and give yourself a password for MSJC's uh, accounts. That's that self-service account. So uh, let me share my screen again. Activate or do something with that activation code pretty soon because it does expire. So seniors, you're not gonna log in, right? Until probably May or June to register for classes. You do have to log in to do an online orientation. So uh, do something though, activate that account pretty soon. If you have to, if you forget and you space it, you can, excuse me, you can, can request another activation code from the login area. Uh, but you can go back to the red button and the steps are all here. So once you get that email, you will want to activate your accounts and this is how to do it. Log in and do an online orientation and activate your student email and then make an appointment with a counselor, okay? I'll show you the counseling website. New students typically attend a new student counseling session. So that's very helpful. They'll tell you exactly what classes you need your first semester of, of uh, MSJC classes. Then you can meet one-on-one -on -one with a counselor anytime. Scroll down the page, guys, because there's your button on how to schedule an appointment with a counselor, or there'll be a list of dates here. There's none there now but there'll be a list of dates for new student counseling sessions. These are group sessions that are very helpful. And then when you scroll down the page, these are great videos to review. Uh, my biggest suggestion to, to you is again, don't let the summer pass you by because you're gonna register in late June or July. Uh, go ahead and meet with a counselor as soon as you can. And that's as soon as you've gone through these steps of uh, activating your accounts. Student Support Hub is there to help you uh, with this live chat. And then look for any updates from MSJC back at the home page. Okay, our schedule for fall should show up about May or June. There are summer classes, but meet with enrollment to make sure you're cleared for registration for a summer session. Your cue really is to look for the schedule for summer to show up. There's a bit of an overlap for high school students. So seniors, don't freak out if you don't get a summer session, you'll have plenty of other summers to take a class. Uh, but this is your area for you as a college student. You do everything as a college student here. Free career coaching, meet with a counselor over summer and get the help you need from the Student Support Hub. My email is there as well, but these steps, these are your, this is your friend, these steps right here, okay? And there's a lot of other helpful links off to the side, especially important dates for the semesters. You'll see summer and fall important dates post in summertime. Things like when can I drop a class and get a refund? When can I drop a class and just get you know a W instead of a, a, an F in the class? You wanna make sure, you'll learn about that in online orientation, okay? So any questions for me, email me at outreach at msjc.edu or give enrollment a call at this number. Be patient with us as we get closer to every new semester. The phone lines and support hub, uh, Zooms get pretty busy, but they'll just put you in a waiting room and you'll, you'll get your turn. Just be patient. But um, that's why I say be early because I want you to have every chance to get that counseling appointment. So for now, I thank you. That's how to apply. I hope that was helpful. 
I uh, kind of buzzed through it fast, but the beauty of this is that you can stop and rewind and replay things and pause and share it with your family and friends. So good luck. Welcome, New Eagles. Thanks for applying to MSJC.